My most valuable possession is my second brain. I know you've probably heard this term thrown around a lot on the internet, but I've tailored it. I've made it my own. I use my second brain to literally manage my life, finances, content creation, studying, and a bunch of other stuff. I know for a fact it would have been so much harder to pass my exams without having good note-taking abilities. And it's not just about passing exams. It's also about using it to store information, templates, documents, references, tables, so much more. Of course, you have to be clever about what and how you store stuff because you don't want to violate any company policies but there's definitely a lot of value that comes from storing information and taking really good notes and in this video i'm going to be talking about that i use this simple note taking method based on a book i read called how to take smart notes so if you want to take better notes then this video is for you the quote that your brain is for having ideas and not storing them. Therefore, you need to make fleeting notes. And fleeting is defined as lasting for a short time. I didn't know what it meant, to be honest, the first time I read it. But what I call this is your brain inbox. You need somewhere that you can just dump random ideas that come to you. And then once in a while, however often you decide, you go into your brain inbox and look at the ideas that you've captured. You organize them, you categorize them, you review them, and you action them. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. So I was having a conversation with a friend and he was talking about Yarra rules. And I was really interested because at that point in my career, I'd not heard of them. And for those who don't know, Yarrow rules is a cybersecurity term and more particularly used in threat intelligence. And it's kind of a way of identifying and classifying malware based on patterns and or signatures. It actually stands for yet another ridiculous acronym and it's widely adopted in cybersecurity to automate the detection of malicious files, behaviors or anomalies within a system. So it's basically like the kind of back end of what your antivirus is picking up and it's a very deep and technical topic and i'll be honest it's not my area of expertise i only really understand it at a surface level i'm definitely not a threat intel specialist but it piqued my interest so i literally went into my brain inbox and i just typed in Yarrow rules and then a few days later when i had some free time i did some basic research some googling and I looked at Yarrow rules and i thought oh this is quite interesting i do have a section about threat intelligence for my note taking for one of the exams that i did a while back so i thought let me add some of the information i found into there and link some of the blogs and white papers i'd found on it in there so i already had some basic information about threat intelligence like literally basic definitions threat feeds threat hunting like just enough to kind of pass an exam nothing crazy but now i've kind of refined my knowledge about threat intelligence and built a little bit extra in there and of course my brain inbox was emptied at that point from yarrow rules and my threat intelligence page grew and a few weeks later similar scenario talking to someone and they started to talk about snort rules again in my brain inbox which i later refined and stored in the threat intelligence section because it's related to threat intelligence while i was researching about snort rules when i got some time i learned about sticks and taxi and a lot more and of course this all kind of built onto my threat intelligence page so now i store more information there like rss feeds and a few other bits but I hope you get the kind of point that one random conversation where someone mentioned something that I just found interesting, I just stored it, wrote it down in my brain inbox. And sometimes it's like a random idea that I just have while going on a walk or in the shower. And I think oh, I've got to really quickly write this down, put it in my brain inbox to think about and unpack later. And that's the reason why you need a brain inbox. It's an initial place to just dump random ideas in a way you will understand. And later on, you kind of go back to it and you take those ideas and you take permanent, more structured and categorized notes that go into different areas of your second brain. And fundamentally, that is really it. I mean, there's so many benefits of this kind of smart notes methodology, but I'll tell you why it's different because traditionally you'd probably take notes per exam, per chapter, per thing you were studying or per project you was working on. And 
what happens here is you lose the relationships between the things. So if I just had notes for my CISSP exam and Threat Intel was part of it, that whole bucket of CISSP notes would kind of get lost. You know, once I've passed the exam, once I've moved past it, and then I come across Threat Intelligence again, I don't have that foundation of knowledge to kind of build on. I almost have to start again with my notes because the categorization, the bucket was CISP, not random things like security management, audit, whatever, whatever, Threat Intel, security operations, etc. Like, if you can split the information up per category, per item, per area, and build on it throughout your career. And of course, add new stuff to it. And it's not just about any exam. It's just this way of creating these really smart buckets and categories for your information. And the complexity and the structure of what your notes look like will mature and improve over time. And there are some nuances to this methodology, originally called the Zettel scan, word I can't pronounce, method. And when I read the book, How to Take Smart Notes, it honestly changed my life. Like I can almost trace back all my success in my career and my exams to that point where I kind of flick the switch of becoming more organized and systemizing how I do things. And when it comes to tools, I mean, it honestly doesn't matter. The original method for note taking was literally done on pen and paper in a box and they'd have like numbers and references in the corner where like the little post-it notes or pieces of paper would link to other ones and that's how kind of the original guy did it. It was a brain inbox on a paper and then later he'd look at that and think, okay, what topics do these other bits relate to? And he was super productive and was able to publish like loads of books and papers and get loads done in his professional life because of this organization method. But I mean, nowadays you have Notion, you have Obsidian, you have Cherry Tree, you have Evernote, Apple Notes, Samsung Notes, you've got all these note taking apps. And to be honest, they're all great. I personally prefer Notion. That's just my opinion. I like the fact that it's on my phone. I can just quickly put something into my brain inbox or tidy something else up if I've got time and I'm on a train. And of course, you know, you can pull your laptop out on full screen and do a little bit more because it's cloud-based and it's free. It's all connected. It's very quick and easy. But yeah, I mean, that's just me. There are plenty of note taking tools. There's even some specifically built off this methodology that I literally built for that only to take notes in that way but yeah don't worry too much about the tools just think of it in that way where you have items space to categorize to list different stuff to have a tree of a page going into another page going into another page or an area going to another area something you can search with and a separate page for your brain inbox that kind of master child type of structure within the notes i think that's important and easy and yeah, if you really want to kind of understand this and look into it a little bit more, then grab a copy of How to Take Smart Notes. I will link it in the description below. And yeah, like, comment, share and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.